Okay, we're starting a brand new unit and we're going to start by classifying triangles. Um, we're going to um, make formal geometric constructions and this is to be used in our proofs. We're ready to do more proofs, guys. You can handle this. <clears throat> and mathematical practices. Two, reason abstractly, abstractly and quantitatively and attending to precision. Previously, you've measured and classified angles. Now we're going to identify and classify triangles by angle measures. And we're going to identify and classify triangles by side measures. Seven new vocabulary words, or maybe not so new. Acute triangle, equilangular triangle, obtuse triangle, right triangle, equilateral triangle, isosceles triangle, and scalene triangle. Triangles can be classified in two ways, by their angles and by their sides. All triangles have at least two acute angles, but the third angle is used to classify the triangle. Now something to remember when you're classifying triangles, be as specific as possible. While a triangle with three congruent angles is an acute triangle, it is more specific to classify it as an equal angular triangle. So let's look at classifying triangles by angles. Look at this one. What do you notice about the measures? What is the most specific way to classify this triangle? It has three congruent angles. They're all acute, so it's equilangular. That's the most specific way to classify this triangle. Let's try another one. We're to classify this triangle as acute, equilangular, obtuse, or right. Notice it has two acute angles, which all triangles do, but there's one that's above 90 degrees. That's an obtuse angle. So this one can be classified as an obtuse triangle. Very good. All right, that was pretty easy. Let's take time to check your progress. So pause the video and read this problem, then come back and check your answer. Well, remember, this is a triangle. I have never seen any uh, wonky jawed windows really. Uh, if it's rectangular, it usually has 90 degree. So we're looking at ACD and that's an obtuse angle. Let's try this one. Okay, we're classifying ADE this time and it is a right angle. Very good. Okay, let's move on. Now we're going to classify triangles by angles within figures. So we're asked to classify triangle X, Y, Z as acute, equilangular, obtuse, or right, and explain our reasoning. Point W is in the interior of X, Y, Z. So the angle addition postulate, the measure of X, Y, W plus W, Y, Z is equal to X, Y, Z. So by substitution, the measure of angle X, Y, Z is 40 plus 50 or 90. So it is a right triangle. See, it's pretty easy to figure out it's a right, but coming out with explaining your reasoning, that's where you need to stop and recall other lessons that we've had. Okay, time to check your progress. So pause the video, read through the problem, and then select your answer. Did you say it was a, a, acute? All three angles are acute, so there's nothing more specific that we know about them. They're all different measures. So acute triangle is the most specific we can get with this one. Okay, now we're going to classify triangles by their sides. Uh, triangles can be classified according to the number of congruent sides they have. To indicate that sides of a triangle are congru uh, congruent, an equal number of hash marks is drawn on the corresponding sides. So see there's one hash mark, one, and one. So because all three of these have one hash mark, that it, this indicates that all three sides are congruent. Now this is two hash marks on this one and as well as this one. So this means that these two sides are congruent. Now this one has no sides marked, and so it's a scalene. Now this one I'm not really happy with because they didn't put hash marks on this figure, so I'll help you identify those. 
the triangle truss shown is modeled for steel construction. Classify triangle J M N, and I will tell you it is scaling. None of the sides are the same, which it wouldn't have been marked anyway because it's scaling. And J K O is also scaling. And O L N is equilateral. They're telling me that OL and LN have the same measure. So knowing that, we can say, or and ON is the same measure as OL and LN, so it is an equilateral triangle. It would have been better if they had marked it like they said they were going to with hash marks. OL. How about check your progress on this window frame? So you know uh, that a rectangular window frame is going to have 90s, so maybe that will help you determine the sides. So pause the video for a moment and come back and check your answer. So ABC is classified as an isosceles. AC and BC are the same uh, length. Okay, now we're going to classify triangles by sides within figures. So we're told that point Y is the midpoint of VX. So that tells us that VY and YX are the same measure. They're equal to each other by definition of midpoint. Angle ad or segment addition postulate tells us VY plus YX is equal to VX. By substitution, since we know the measurement of Vx is 8.4, we'll substitute that in. And since Vy is equal to Yx, we're going to substitute a Vy in for Yx. Now we've got 2 Vy is equal to 8.4. Divide both sides by 2. Now we know the measurement of Vy. So Vy is 4.2. Vw is 4.5. YW is three units, so none of the sides have the same length. This one is scalene. Time to check your progress. So pause the video for a moment, work the problem, and then come back. This one is at least marked for you. It is isosceles. Very good. These two are marked. You can also set it up by definition of midpoint. The BC is equal to CD. So you can find out the measure of BC comes out to be 1.7. And this is 1.2, 1.2, 1.7. So you know they're not all three the same measurement. You can also use properties of isosceles and equilateral triangles to find missing values. That's what we're going to do in example five. Find the measures of the sides of isosceles triangle KLM with base KL. Well, if the base is KL, then we know that KM and LM have the same measure. They're the ones that are identical. So first of all, we're going to set KM and ML equal to each other and simply solve for D. So we're going to add D to both sides here, and then we're going to add 13 to both sides, and then divide by 5. So D is equal to 5. You might take a quick note of those measures before you, uh, and pause the video and do that before you go to the next slide. Okay, so KM is equal to 40 minus 13. You're going to substitute a 5 in for D and solve. Because ML is equal to KM, we know that once we find the measurement of ML, we found the measure of KM. Now we just do the math for KL. If D is set, uh, 5, 5 plus 6 is 11. So the measurement KM is equal to ML, which is equal to 7, and KL is equal to 11. All right, finally time to check your, an your uh, progress. So pause the video. I would suggest you draw the figure. That really helps me when I'm working these problems. Then come back and check your answer. Did you get X is 3 and all sides are 10? I set BC equal to HC and then solve for X. 
and then substituted back in to find the measure for BC. And because we're told it's equal lateral, all sides are the same length. Very good. All right, you're be ready to begin your assignment.